Today, I want to talk to you about a verse that we looked at a few days ago, but maybe look at it from a little bit different angle. I'm talking about Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and I want to talk to you about the principle that you can't save yourself. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 reads this, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The angel Gabriel brought this dramatic announcement to Mary and told her that she would bear a son miraculously and that the son would save his people from their sins. The bottom line is simple. The people could not save themselves from their sin. They needed a savior to come and save them. You know, some things you shouldn't do for yourself. Years ago, I read about a woman named Heather who lived in Gloucester, England. At the time, she was 29 years old, and doctors said that she had an illness known as myelagic encephalitis, which leaves sufferers feeling permanently exhausted. Heather felt that she had just the cure for her ailment, but the doctors wouldn't do what she thought needed to be done. So she flew to the United States, but she couldn't find an American doctor to do what she thought needed to be done. So she did it herself. This woman named Heather from England decided that drilling a hole in her head, a headache treatment from the Middle Ages known as trepanation, would do the trick. According to the Reuters news agency, she performed the procedure on herself in front of a mirror. And despite drilling too deeply and nearly puncturing her brain, this is what she said. I have no regrets. I generally feel better, and there's definitely more mental clarity. Now, I think that if she would have had more mental clarity to begin with, she would have never tried such a thing on herself. That was something that she should not have done for herself. But the matter of our salvation is more than something that we shouldn't do for ourselves. It's something that we simply can't do for ourselves. Sometimes we think we can save ourselves when we compare our lives to the lives of people around us. I'm really not as bad as him, we think. Surely God must approve of me while he must disapprove of him. Now, on a human level, it's all very logical. But salvation isn't accomplished on a human level. It happens on a divine level as we receive what Jesus did for us on the cross. It is as if three men were in a boat in the middle of the ocean, thousands of miles away from land. Their boat develops a leak, and they decide that their only chance is to swim for land. The first man gets out of the boat, splashes for 10 feet or so, but he can't swim, and so he drowns immediately. The second man is a fair swimmer, so he jumps in the water and swims for half a mile until he drowns. The third man is an Olympic champion swimmer, and he sets out mile after mile he swims until he swims a hundred miles, and then he still drowns 900 miles from any land. Now, one man made it much farther than the others, but he still didn't even come close to the goal. Each one of those three men in the silly little illustration I just used perished. It's the same way with trying to save ourselves. You may do much better than someone else, but you can't do it good enough to succeed. You need to trust in what Jesus did to save you. Because when God promised that he will save his people from their sins, God meant it. You see, when you think about the question, why am I saved? Why am I rescued and made right before God? What comes to your mind? If the first thing that comes to your mind begins like this, because I did something or other, then you need to remember that you can't save yourself. Your first response to that question, why are you saved? Why are you rescued? Why are you made right with God? It needs to be this, because Jesus did. And then you can fill in the answer from there. That puts you on the right track. So receive him today, the Savior who came to save his people from their sins. Thank you.